hello students today let us examine and study about various provisions related to the insurance act 1938 funds management and solvency margins objective of this lesson is to provide inputs about various financial resources of insurance company explain the regulations relating to the management and deployment of funds discuss law and regulations relating to the investments of the funds available with the insurance company required books of accounts documents and submission of returns and reports to the irda explain the provisions of law relating to the solvency margins insurance business and financial resources one of the important factor that led to the nationalization of insurance business in the independent india is the management of funds by some of the private insurance companies the share capital insurance premium received from the policy holders or the insured and interest earned on investments penalties for late payments of premium and other miscellaneous receipts are the income sources for the insurance company the payment of salaries administrative expenses claims payments penalties for the late claims settlements litigation expenses for defending the court cases advertisements and marketing expenses commission payments dividend bonus payments and some of the exam expenses of the insurance company the insurance company generally have some excess of income over the expenses in addition to the excess income year and some of the liquid funds earmarked for honoring the future obligations are available with them such liquid funds are invested in various financial market instruments as per the regulations of the irda and converted into liquid cash whenever they need them share capital according to the section 6 of the insurance act 1938 every insurance company requires a minimum of rupees 100 crores as a share capital for starting the life or general insurance business and rupees 200 crores for starting the reinsurance business the share capital shall be in equity shares only with a single face value that is in section 6a every insurance company like any other company should maintain the shareholders register and the share capital as per the provisions of the memorandum of association of the company within the framework of the sebi the share capital is one of the important resources of the insurance company let us look at premium the insurance premium paid by the insured to cover the risk of uncertainty insured is another major source of finance or income to the insurance company in case of the life insurance company the premium is paid either on monthly quarterly half yearly or yearly basis the life insurance policies are long term policies and the policy holders are permitted to pay the premium in installments as agreed upon as such the life insurance companies receive the premium for a long term regularly whereas the payments for claim settlement is not that frequent the general insurance policies are of short term generally one year and are renewed if the uncertain event does not happen during that particular period claim will not arise and the amounts all allocated towards the claim payment will be with the insurance companies the life insurance companies charge penalties for the late payment of premiums thus the insurance premium and the penalties are the important resources for the insurance companies interest received the insurance company collects the amounts from the policy holders in the shape of premium and augments for payment of future claims till the claims are received the insurance companies invest such funds in the securities as per the provisions of insurance act 1938 and irda regulations the insurance companies earn interest and dividends upon such investments let us look at deployment of funds 
insurance funds are low cost funds available for the insurance companies for long term it is perennial resources for the development activities of the country and mismanagement and diversion of insurance funds will lead to the financial chaos and detrimental to the national economy there is an acute need for regulation of the insurance funds the insurance act 1938 has the provisions relating to the payment of commissions to the agent and remuneration to the office of the insurance companies it also directed the insurance companies not lend money to the directors of the insurance company the funds received by the insurance company are used for the administration of insurance business insurance company payment of claims and other related expenditure the companies under obligation to maintain the solvency margins to honor the future claims the insurance company shall invest such funds in various securities issued by the government and approved securities some more funds in the name of interest on such investments are available for insurance companies and provide further financial leverage to the insurance company investments the insurance companies are permitted to invest the excess money in approved securities or assets that is available with them for the payment of future claims section 27 27a 27b 27e 28 and 30 of the insurance act 1938 and regulations made by the irda from time to time govern the investment of funds by the insurance company in case of life insurance companies the shareholders funds are share capital premium funds received from the policy holders which are not part of the unit schemes policy holders funds under the unit schemes policy holder funds under pensions and annuity schemes are available for investments in case of the general insurance funds the shareholders funds representing the solvency margins and policy holders premium funds are available for investments section 27e of the insurance act 1938 prohibits the investments of funds outside india the investments in approved securities or the assets are to be strictly in accordance with the provisions of the act every insurance company is under a duty to submit the returns relating to investments to the irda on regular basis as directed by it from time to time the insurance companies are under an obligation to invest funds in the various types of securities such as the government securities and government approved securities and not in the private companies the insurance company should invest funds every year which are equal in to or not less than the sum of the net liabilities payable or matured claims payable to the life insurance policy holders after adjusting the premiums due and the amounts receivable on outstanding loans on such policies in case of general insurance business the general insurance companies should invest 25% of the assets in government securities and 10% additional investment in government securities or government approved securities and leftover amounts may be invested in other approved securities as per the prudential norms and regulations issued by the IRDA from time to time all the securities invested by the insurance company should be free from encumbrances charges hypothecation or lien the IRDA shall be issuing or modifying the guidelines for investment to life and general insurance investments from time to time the investments made in assets located in india owned by the foreign companies should be held in trustees resident in india and approved by the authority the life insurance companies should not invest the control funds exceeding 15% without the consent of all the directors present in a meeting and eligible to vote having the 
meeting conducted according to the law. The control fund shall not be invested in the banking companies, shares and debentures of unapproved companies. The investment should be made in money market instruments such as certificate of deposits, commercial paper, repos and reverse repos, treasury bills, call money and other accepted instruments having good credit ratings. The investment portfolio changes from type of the insurance business that is undertaken by the insurer. In case of life insurance companies, the portfolio should contain 25% of the sum of funds available in the central government securities, total investment in central government security, state government securities and approved securities should not be less than 50% of the funds available with the investments. Investments in approved securities including the investments in the assets should not be more than 50% of the funds including the investments of 15% under the prudential norms. Investments in infrastructure schemes should not be less than 50% of the sum. Investment in the housing schemes of National Housing Bank or HADCO etc. scheme should not be less than 15%. In case of funds from pensions schemes, annuity and group insurance business, not less than 40% of the funds should be invested in the securities of the central government, state government and approved securities in which the investment in central government should not be less than 20% of the total available funds. Balance of 60% funds may be invested in the approved securities as per the prudential norms and exposures. In case of funds available from the general insurance business, including the health insurance, the investments in central government, state government and approved securities should not be less than 30% including funds in central government securities which should be not less than 20%. The remaining 70% of the available funds may be invested in approved investments under the prudential norms provision. The sector-wise investments ought to be made and investments in the housing sector should not be less than 50% of the total investments and in the infrastructure sector. It should not be less than 10% of the total investments. Every insurance company should frame an investment policy and constitute an investment committee consisting of minimum two non exclude directors chief executive officer, chief financial officer and chief of the investment division. The insurance company should have proper risk management systems in place and review the same on a regular basis. The insurance company shall formulate an audit committee of the board headed by the chartered accountant for auditing the investment transactions. If any person or insurance company violates the provisions of investments stated in section 27, 27A, 27B, 27D and 27E and guidelines of the IRDA is liable for a penalty not exceeding 25 crore rupees. Now let us understand solvency margins. The insurance company who sold the insurance policies should have funds or assets to honor the future claims and maturing obligations. The funds invested in the government issued securities or approved securities should have immediate liquidity. Depending upon the quantum of future obligations, the investments are to be realized in cash format. The Insurance Act 1938 has the provisions relating to the solvency margins. The solvency margin is the excess of value of assets over the value of liabilities and solvency ratio means the ratio of the amount available as solvency margin to the amount of required for solvency margin. Every insurance company shall maintain the solvency margins at every point of time. Section 64V 
of the Insurance Act 1938 imposes an obligation of the insurer to arrange the valuation of the financial assets it possesses at the realizable value. The authority may provide for exclusion of certain assets and also the method of arranging the valuation of the assets. The regulations notified by the authority also prescribe the methods of recognizing premium and its deficiency, acquisition costs, claims costs, actuarial valuation of the liabilities and assets, method of valuation of assets and investments, unlisted and listed securities. Every insurer shall submit their returns relating to the assets included to calculate the solvency margins. Section 64 VA of the Insurance Act 1938 states that every insurer shall maintain assets whose value is in excess of liabilities and not less than 50 percent of the amount of minimum capital stated in the Act and asserted by the regulations. If the insurance company or reinsurance company is not maintaining minimum level of assets as stated above are considered as insolvent and not capable of honoring the obligations. The insolvency is one of the grounds for ordering the insurance company for winding up. The IRDA shall notify a level solvency margin known as control level of solvency. It is a fundamental duty of every insurer to maintain such control level of solvency at every point of time of its insurance business. If the solvency margins drop below the control level of solvency because of rise in the business during that particular period or for any justified reason, the insurer has to inform the same to the authority and try to fill the gap within the specified time. The insurer shall submit a financial plan to the authority stating the reasons for drop of the solvency margins below specified control level of solvency margin to correct the deficiency within a specified time period. The authority after examining the request of the insurer if found justified authorize the insurer to improve the solvency margin in the specified period. If the authority is not satisfied with the financial plan of the insurer it may modify the plan and direct the insurance to fulfill the deficiency. If the insurer fails to comply, the insurer is deemed to be in default and is subject to the penal provisions of the deficiency. The authority may inspect the insurer and examine the valuation of the assets and liabilities and required control solvency margins and if found to have deficiency direct the insurer to rectify the same within a period of two months. The insurer is to furnish the details of the solvency margins in the form specified and intervals notified by the authority. The insurer is liable to pay the penalty of rupees 1 lakh for each day during which such deficiency continues or 1 crore rupees whichever is less. Now let us understand books of accounts, records and audit. Section 10 of the Insurance Act 1938 states that every insurer should have separate accounts for every class of insurance business such as life insurance business, fire insurance, marine insurance or miscellaneous insurance. The regulations prescribe the records and books which are to be maintained by the insurance company. Section 11 of the Insurance Act says that every insurer shall keep separate accounts related to the funds of shareholders and policyholders. Section 14 of the Act says that every insurer should have the books related to the insurance business undertaken by it in India such as register or record of policies, register or records of claims and so on. Every insurance shall maintain the record of policies sold, claims received, claims settled, claims pending. 
every insurer should maintain the books such as the register of policies of every class of insurance business having information relating to the policy holder such as name address details of the policy purchased and assignments and nominations made to the particular policy register of claims containing the information relating to the claimants dates of receipt of the claim fate of the claim whether rejected or approved and payment of claim or other action taken upon the claim after it is received register of insurance agents and their details register of the shareholders and members of the company containing the information relating to register of the proposals proposal advance cash book first year's premium cash book renewal premium cash book agency and branch cash book petty cash book claims cash book commission register lapsed and cancelled policies book journal policy loan ledger general loan ledger investment ledger audit of accounts and books the books of accounts and financial statements such as the balance sheet profit and loss account revenue account and profit and loss appropriation account of every insurer in respect of all insurance businesses shall be audited annually by an auditor as per the provisions of the companies act 2013 the certified actuary shall investigate the financial conditions of the insurance company undertaking the life insurance business every year including the valuation of the assets and liabilities of the insurance company and submit a report of findings the actuary shall make an abstract of such report as notified in the regulations the auditor and the actuary shall submit a report along with the comments on the deficiencies now let us understand preparation of the financial statements insurance regulatory and development authority preparation of financial statements and audit report of insurance companies regulation 2000 and amended thereafter has clearly provided the methods of preparation of financial statements of insurance business such as revenue account profit and loss account balance sheet individual ledger accounts of loans premium share capital fixed assets current liabilities and other provisions required to prepare the financial statement schedule 1 to 4 of the insurance act of 1938 are also having the provisions for submission of various reports of accounts to the authority it has provisions related to the loans linked business and disclosures to made along with the financial statement part 2 of the regulations contain the general instructions for preparing financial statements and part 4 of the regulations contain the information which is to be reported to the authority the regulations contain a number of forms which are to be used in preparing the financial accounts and reports submitted to them the regulations also prescribe the formats of balance sheets reports of auditors and other reports and formats which are to be used in the accounts the submission of returns according to section 18 of the insurance act 1938 every insurer shall furnish a certified copy of every report on affairs of the concern which is submitted to the members or policy holders of the insurer to the authority you should submit a certified copy of the abstract and minutes of the proceedings every general meeting within 30 days from the holding of the meeting every insurance company shall submit four copies of printed auditor accounts and financial statements including the balance sheet profit and loss account account of receipts and payments revenue account prepared in accordance with the regulations issued by the authority you should also submit the actuarial report and abstract statement prepared by the actuaries within 6 months from 
the end of the period to which they refer. The Insurance Act 1938, IRD Act 1999 and the IRDA imposes a duty upon the insurer to submit various statements relating to the premium collected, shareholding membership of shareholders, invest made in different categories of the approved securities of the central and state government and the insurance business carried in rural and social sector of the society as included in section 32 of the act. All these statements are required to monitor the business of insurance in India and correct the defects of the insurance business. The rules of insurance act 1938 also propose many formats for reporting to the concerned authorities. Section 16 of the rules insists upon the insurers to submit returns containing information related to the insurance business established outside India. Under section 21 of the Insurance Act 1938, the authority has the power to call for information and require and examine any officer who has prepared the reports and accounts. The authority may direct the concerned insurer to change the report or ask for the corrections or modifications. Under section 18 of the Act, every insurer should supply and furnish a certified copy of every report on the affairs of the concerning every member or policy holder to the authority as the case may be. All the returns submitted to the authority are presumed to be the true copies of the records of the insurance company and admitted in the course for evidence. Any of the alterations made to the records and returns which were already submitted to the authority ought to be notified with a due certification and reasons explaining such alterations. All the documents which are submitted to the authority and all the returns which are under the custody of the authority are the public documents and subject to inspection by the members or public having interest in the subject matter. Today we learned something about the various funds and financial resources available to the insurance company and also how the funds are spent by the insurance company. We also discussed some of the regulations and rules, provisions of Insurance Act 1938 relating to the deployment of the insurance funds.